Do the big AI labs need to be more open to outside researchers? Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. We have ourselves another open letter in the AI field. I'm joking, of course, because last year we had a slew of open letters, most notably the six-month pause letter, but this one is, while perhaps coming from some similar places, a little bit different. The Washington Post reports top AI researchers say OpenAI, Meta, and more hinder independent evaluations. And basically, what this group of 200 or so people are asking for is for generative AI labs to allow independent researchers and investigators to check out their systems as part of a broader safety mechanism. The open letter is called a safe harbor for independent AI evaluation. The signatories say that they agree on three main things. First, that, quote, independent evaluation is necessary for public awareness, transparency, and accountability of high-impact generative AI systems. Number two, that currently AI company policies can chill independent evaluation. And that three, AI companies should provide basic protections and more equitable access for good faith AI safety and trustworthiness research. Basically, what this group is saying is that a key part of the AI safety apparatus across companies, not just within any one lab, is to allow people who aren't affiliated with that company and who don't fear reprisal from that company to dig into their systems with potential risks and threats in mind. They write, Disempowering independent researchers is not in AI companies' own interests. To help protect users, we encourage AI companies to provide two levels of protection to research. First, a legal safe harbor would indemnify good-faith independent AI safety, security, and trustworthiness research, provided it is conducted in accordance with well-established vulnerability disclosure rules. Second, companies should commit to more equitable access by using independent reviewers to moderate researchers' evaluation applications, which would protect rule-abiding safety research from counterproductive account suspensions and mitigate the concern of companies selecting their own evaluators. While these basic commitments will not solve every issue surrounding responsible AI today, it is an important first step on the long roads towards building and evaluating AI in the public interest. So this is interesting because this is not a request for full openness. It's a request for effectively an openness carve-out even within closed systems. The list of letter signers, which they currently have at more than 250, includes some prominent names from the AI space. Now, when it comes to the list of signatories, the vast majority of the 250 plus that they now list come from the world of academia. One notable exception to that is Clem, the CEO and co-founder at Hugging Face, which makes sense given that company's position on open AI systems. But given how many of these folks are outside of the actual AI business space, it'll be interesting to see if it gets any sort of traction among the labs. I certainly think that potentially it could be a PR win for some of them, holding aside questions of, you know, whether it's the right thing to do or not. Next up in this brief, we turn our attention to the ongoing AI arms race between the U.S. and China, where, of course, the dominant force right now is U.S. export restrictions around semiconductors and AI-related chips. The big U.S. companies, in response to prohibitions, have tried to find AI chips that they could tailor to that market, being powerful enough to appeal to Chinese buyers while still being lower than the bar set by the U.S. Commerce Department. It appears that AMD's slightly lower-powered China-focused chip is not getting the Commerce Department seal of approval. Bloomberg writes that U.S. officials have told AMD that the AI chip it made for the Chinese market is still too powerful to sell without a license. The market did not like this, and AMD shares were down over 2% as the markets opened. Now, one of the interesting market dynamics here is to what extent these U.S. companies are just forced to surrender their market because the offerings that would get the U.S. green light are simply less powerful at worse cost than homegrown alternatives. Indeed, Reuters reports today China to step up quantum computing AI in tech self-sufficiency drive. This is from a government work report that is clearly using these geopolitical issues as a rallying cry domestically. But if these rules are creating something of a headwind for chip makers, the potential for damage doesn't appear to have markets all that freaked out. One noted analyst, Ming Chai Kuo, wrote on Twitter that they believe that, quote, if Apple fails to launch generative AI services this year that are better than market expectations, NVIDIA's market value will most likely surpass Apple. By way of comparison, Apple's market cap right now is $2.78 trillion, as compared to NVIDIA's $2.06 trillion. Over the last year, Apple's stock has gone up about 13%, while NVIDIA's stock is up 260%. Apple is in an interesting position. The vast, vast majority of their revenue still comes from the iPhone, but that means that if iPhone sales run into any troubles, that can be a huge challenge. For example, while coming into the year, analysts expected Apple to ship between 220 and 225 million iPhones, that number is now looking closer to 200 iPhone sales to China in the first six weeks of the year were down 24%. Of course, it does appear that Apple has grokked that AI is going to be key to these efforts and perhaps key to future iPhone sales, given that they abandoned their multi-billion dollar multi-year car project, Project Titan, and shifted many of those engineering resources over to AI. 
Now, the other company with Apple and NVIDIA at the top of the market cap heap is Microsoft, who were also in the news today surrounding their latest motion to dismiss the New York Times lawsuit against them and partner OpenAI. The big reference point in this motion to dismiss is the VCR. The motion reads, despite the Times' contentions, copyright law is no more of an obstacle to large language models than it was to the VCR or the player piano, copy machine, personal computer, internet, or search engine. They also challenged the lawsuit on the basis that the New York Times never gave an example of direct copyright infringement by a co-pilot user. Microsoft's motion says, The Times' contributory infringement theory thus fails on the very same basis the challenge to the VCR failed four decades ago. It improperly seeks to impose liability based solely on the design or distribution of a product capable of substantial lawful use. For now, this lawsuit continues to be a very important one when it comes to the future of the generative AI space. Lastly today... The Wall Street Journal is reporting that Perplexity is raising another round, this one that would value it at over a billion dollars, making it the latest AI unicorn. If this round is completed, it will come just a couple months after Perplexity raised $74 million at a valuation of $520 million. Not confirmed yet, but something certainly to watch. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. Up next, the main AI Breakdown.